What's up gamers? So you know what I never hear anyone talking about? Mobile game sequels. Everybody always talks about how good like Plants vs. Zombies is or how much money they wasted on Candy Crush, but you never hear anyone talking about Doodle Jump 2. Which, you know, might be because it's literally exactly the same as the first game. So today, we're finally going to be talking about mobile games for the first time on this channel. And after countless minutes of research, I assembled a list of some of the mobile game sequels I wanted to talk about. I'm going to be going through some of these pretty quickly, because as you can imagine, I didn't have like a ton of stuff to say about Temple Run 2, if you can believe it. So please say this more as like my first impression with them, rather than like a super in-depth review. Because as it turns out, no, I can't 100% like 7 apps in a couple days. Who would have thought? But before we get into it, hey, it's Adam from the future who really needs a haircut, and I'm here to tell you that this video was brought to you by Manscaped, who sent me some cool stuff to talk about, like these anti-chafing boxer briefs that I unfortunately can't try out on YouTube. You're gonna have to go to a different side if you want to see that. As well as their handyman shaver. And listen, okay, up until this year, I was absolutely horrible at shaving, okay? Go back and look at any old video of mine, you can absolutely tell. As someone who can't actually grow a beard and can only grow enough facial hair to make it look like I'm not allowed near schools anymore, I can definitely say the handyman is the closest I've gotten to having my face not look like a 12 year old's. It uses both a unique dual blade and long hair leveler to take care of up to three days worth of bum fluff in one go. It's got a 60 minute battery life and this thing is waterproof too, which makes cleaning it super easy. And it surprised me with how small it is, which means that it's really easy to bring along when you're traveling and also means it's super easy to store if you're like me and have about 20 billion other things in your bathroom at all times. Plus this thing uses skin safe technology, which is designed to stop you from cutting yourself, which is especially good for people like me who absolutely suck at shaving. So go to manscaped.com Diamond Vault or use my channel name for 20% off when purchasing the handyman and free shipping. Thanks, Adam. You're so welcome, guys. Thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Don't forget the promo code manscaped.com slash diamond vault for 20% off and free shipping. And now back to the video. I guess I wanted to start with the obvious because I have a bone to pick with Plants vs. Zombies 2, okay? Playing this game for the first time was a bigger disappointment in my childhood than finding out that Santa wasn't real. The first Plants vs. Zombies is one of the only apps that I'd still pick up and play nowadays and is like as fun as I remember it being when I was a kid. And that gameplay carries through in the sequel as well because goddamn Plants vs. Zombies is such a good game. But there are two major problems in this one that will immediately tell you my issue with it. One, the game is free to play. Two, it was made by EA. The original game was a one-time purchase back in the day of like $7 or something, but PVZ2 was free to play from the get-go, which means there are at least a healthy 47 different in-game currencies to choose from. Like you can buy coins and gems and candy and bundles, and I, I honestly don't even know what this screen does, but that anime game on the side is making me kind of nervous. You don't have to spend money to get through the game, obviously, but when they bombard you with it this much, it really just kind of like sucks the fun out of the rest of the game. The theme of this one is really cool, like this time in Instead of it being confined to the back of someone's house, you and Crazy Dave go back in time to places like ancient Egypt and pirates. Apparently they kept like adding new plants to the game for like ages after it came out. So now I'm here with like the culmination of almost a decade's worth of updates with over 180 plants to choose from, which is only, you know, a little bit insane, I think. I had a look online to see what other people thought of this game just because I was curious. And people both seem to agree with and sound like 14 year old me in these Reddit posts I found that are over a decade old. But I'm really glad to see that it wasn't just me who was like really put off by how much this game wants to get into your bank account. Like the Zen Garden is back, but now of course you have the option to just buy half of it with gems. Oh, and you can rent plants for one level by watching an ad too. They, they've got every single possible facet of this game monetized, don't you worry. Honestly though, I never really gave this one much of a chance as a kid because I never even made it past the first level because I was probably too busy beating Plants vs Zombies 1 for the 50th time. It's really not as bad as I remember it, but that's probably because I'm like completely desensitized to mobile games since they're all like this now. Uh, so PVZ2 doesn't stand out like like as much, which is a really sad thought for the industry, but pretty good for Plants vs Zombies 2. Okay, next up we have Angry Birds 2, and to be honest with this one I was kind of curious with like seeing how in a series it has what, like 50,000 different spin-offs of every kind of genre ever made, like a racing game and an RPG and Transformers, you know, to see what could possibly be different about 2. And as it turns out, uh, not much. <laughs> Genuinely, in terms of just the actual gameplay away from all of the mobile game crap that I'm about to complain about, Angry Birds 2 was actually pretty good. The birds are like cards now that you can swap between while you play and each level has like multiple screens to get through so you have to make sure to conserve your birds and it constantly amazed me how much I forgot to do this every single time and just kept blowing all of them on the first screen anyway. Yeah, I'm a gamer. The problem is that this game apparently does not want you to actually play it because I found out very quickly that the game has an energy system where every time you lose or restart it counts down your hearts until you can't play the game anymore unless you pay. Like look how sad they make red look here. Doesn't that make you want to spend at least $4.99 
99 at the app store. I can deal with having to close like three individual pop-ups every time I go to the menu, okay? And I can deal with ignoring 14 different currencies it keeps throwing at me and cosmetic bird hats. But there's no way I'm waiting 10 minutes to play Angry Birds 2 every day. Ain't no way, man. I'm just like so done with these apps that as soon as they come up with menus like this with like a hundred different options where half of them just want me to spend money, my mind literally just blanks. I could barely work out how to get through the menu at first after being harassed about all of these daily challenges and events that I don't care about because I just want to play Angry Birds. What the fuck do I click on? But the very first thing I did click on took me to straight up a gambling mini game. <laughs> so if that's not indicative of this whole experience, I don't want to spend this whole video complaining about stuff like this because that's just the way that mobile games are nowadays. But I think there's just something so annoying about having a life system that stops you from playing the game. I was talking about it with one of my friends who does game design. Yeah, I got connections. And the idea is that apparently if you don't limit players in some way, they'll play the game too much and then get bored. So by like locking them out of the game for a certain period of time, it's meant to give them incentive to keep coming back every day. And I was thinking about how incredibly stupid that is until I remembered the embarrassing amount of time that I played Tiny Tower for, where you have to wait to do literally anything in that game. So yeah, I guess it works. Jetpack Joyride 2 was genuinely the one I was most nervous to check out in this video because I love the first game so much. If not for Plants vs. Zombies, it would be my favorite mobile game ever made. But it's a bit of an interesting one because you can't actually find it on the normal app store. It's only on Apple Arcade, which is a monthly subscription service that I did not know about until three days ago. The very first thing I thought when I first booted this game up is that it looks borderline identical to the first one. But don't worry, there's one very big difference, and that's that Barry is packing heat this time. During the game now, there are segments where like robots and bosses appear and Barry like automatically whips out a gun to shoot them. And they also come with their own power-up tokens that make it way easier for you to mow down innocent scientists. But the vehicle tokens from the first game are back too. Thank God I would have been so sad if they weren't. What sucks about the vehicles in this one though is that not only do they look infinitely worse than the first game, but they're also now just on a time limit instead of like until you get hit, which is a bit of a letdown because it makes them all feel like they're just rigged to explode. You have a health bar now too, so it's not just like an instant death when you get fucking exploded by a missile, which is nice when you're as shit at this game as I am. And I don't know how I forgot to mention, it's not even an endless runner anymore. Jetpack Joyride 2 does the same thing as every other game in this video and operates on a level format, which I think actually kind of works for it, but I just think because it's so similar to the first game, it feels a lot less like a Jetpack Joyride sequel and more just like a remake with some extra shit thrown in there that makes it less fun. It's still good, don't get me wrong, but I just would still prefer to play the first game over it, but you know, it's Jetpack Joyride with guns, so you can't really go wrong with that. While I wasted $9 on Apple Arcade, I figure I may as well also check out Crossy Road Castle, the kind of sequel to Crossy Road. This one is nothing like the first game at all. It's like a side-scrolling platformer where you scale a tower by endlessly clearing through rooms until you die or get off the toilet. It is infinite and randomized like the first Crossy Road, and if you fuck up, it takes you right back to the beginning, but I actually think this one is way more my jam than the original game. And I gotta say, you know, not to brag or anything, but I got pretty mediocre at this game after a while, you know? I made it all the way up to floor 50, which I very quickly learned was not even the bare fucking minimum, because as it turns out, there's all of these other castles to get through, so it is like a pretty big game. It's got the same, like, 50 million characters and random gacha system to unlock them, but the gameplay is super rapid because each floor only takes like a couple seconds to clear and the music absolutely slaps. This one is honestly just really great and probably my favorite in this whole video, which is funny because the only reason I played it in the first place was to get a return on that $9 Apple Arcade investment. There is a multiplayer mode as well, but if you can believe it, none of my friends wanted to pay $10 so they could play Crossy Castle with me. I don't know if I'd say it's worth signing up for this for, but you know, if you ever pay for it by accident or something, just know that this game does make a fart noise every time you die. <laughs> All right, next is Fruit Ninja 2. And in this one, the biggest changes they made, aside from having these Fortnite-ass characters that jump scare you at the title screen, huh. is the addition of these like PVP stages that the tutorial map makes you do a couple times before it leaves you alone. The way that these work is that you can only slice the fruits that are assigned in your color, which means sometimes you actually just have to sit there and wait your turn. And then other times where like a bunch of fruit comes up on the screen at once and you have to stick to just your side. It's really exciting. The white ones in the middle though are just up to whoever's more of a gamer. And while I have a sneaking suspicion that that mysterious ninja was not a real person, it is important that you know that I kicked their ass. Ain't no one messing with ninja 529955, baby. I'm actually not sure if the map level select was just for the tutorial or not, because I couldn't figure out how to get back to it after I finished it, but this game does just let you play regular Fruit Ninja if you want. I was honestly kind of on board with Fruit Ninja 2 after a while, because I was initially very skeptical at first of them doing like Fruit Ninja in a mission format, and while I didn't play it for like super long, the actual gameplay is enough to keep it fun for at least until after the tutorial stage, where afterwards 
would you become worthy enough to assign yourself your own username? Which definitely fit and didn't get cut off or censored at all. Go forth, Fortnite game. You are now ready to explore Fruitasia. Before I say too many nice things about it though, there are literally watermelon loot boxes in this game, and I think three different in-game currencies, which is about three too many, and season passes as well. Dude, when I called this Fortnite, I was kidding. Now we gotta check out Talking Tom 2, because this game has got to be one of the most bomb-ass sequels ever made. It's got three new buttons, and that is it. <laughs> everything that you can do in the first game is back. Tom repeats everything he hears, including my dog in the background while I'm recording footage. <coughs> there is a button that makes Talking Ben show up and shit himself. <coughs> The area where they put in the most effort though was into all of these new costumes that you can get Tom to wear. Here's what I'm confused about though. You start the game with 500 coins, which you obviously need to buy any of these costumes, but I don't know where any of these coins actually come from. I think the only way you can get more of these, since there's obviously no actual gameplay in Talking Tom for you to earn coins, is to either watch an ad or spend real money. And I'm pretty sure I broke the game after I tried putting on all of the free items at once. <laughs> I had a look at some of the newer games these guys have been putting out, and I think the most recent Talking Tom apps are like virtual pet things like Tamagotchi now. Like their newest one is called My Talking Tom, and it looks like it has like way more to do in it than any of their older games. And they did a Mr. Beast collab for it, so they seem to be doing pretty well. Mr. Beast just got me the most fire outfit ever! Oh my god, do you guys remember Hill Climb Racing? Yeah, that's right, now we're really pushing it for content. I never really played the original much as a kid, but it's physics-based, just like the first game, so when you're in the air, you sort of have to like balance your car by mashing the brake and accelerate so you don't snap your guy's neck. Okay, so what's added in this one is that there's another menu that gives me a headache even looking at it. There is a premium pass for fucking hill climb racing, which you can get using the incredibly original in-game currency of diamonds. You can also drip out your extremely depressed looking driver with the game's unnecessarily detailed character customization, like even down to being able to choose a victory animation for when you win. But there is a dab emote, so this game is automatically good. I didn't play this one for super long because I didn't imagine that anyone would care about hill climb racing too, but I found out that this game must have a pretty decent following because there's an entire wiki for it. It even has its own lore section. Clearly I'm very behind on the hill climb racing too meta. I'm so sorry. Anyway, that's all from me. There were a couple I had to leave out of this one because I just had absolutely nothing interesting to say about Cut the Rope 2, or because some just weren't even on the App Store anymore, like Pocket God Journey to Uranus, which I miss so much. Hope you guys enjoyed my 59th mobile game video this year, and I will see you all next time.